A frog is sitting on the top of a beaver dam, looking at the pond on one side and down to the small treeless valley on the other side, thinking to himself, how is this possible? A beaver has cautiously trundled up the edge of a concrete dam. He watches with reverence as a thin layer of water glides gently over the top and down the spillway. He's thinking to himself, how is this possible? An Inca king is standing next to a small mortarless stone dam. He knows that the Spanish are coming, so he turns to the ancient and holy site and prays, Whomever you are and however you can, please help us now. The answer never came. Hello, my name is Harvey Turner. In the same way that a beaver cannot build a concrete dam, we, at this time, given our current tech and conventional thinking, cannot build a mortarless polygonal stone dam, and yet they still exist and they hold water. My earlier videos include how to build a polygonal megalithic wall and the lost art of stone softening and other videos about Peru. And after I complete and post this video, I intend to take a break from this enigma as I believe that it is unsolvable until one of two things happen. First, the powers that be in Egypt and Jordan and Peru must allow the excavation of one location for research and study. Why can't we dismantle one of the Giza pyramids, or fully uncover Saxahuaman, or excavate the Temple of Jupiter? What is being hidden? What is it that they don't want found? A lost tech tool? A carbon datable hint? Or perhaps a complete time capsule? And if no excavations, then... Two, we humans must think outside our normal physics and our mathematics and re-theorize and reinvent the tech that has been lost. Obviously, it is possible to temporarily alter rhyolite and granite and to transport it many, many miles away and fit it exactly into place. Oleante Tambo in Peru is proof of this, as are dozens of other locations in Peru. So, what must we relearn that makes this possible again? A huge clue is right here in the periodic table. And the math is right here. PV equals NRT in the ideal gas law equation. This 200-year-old mathematical equation is the life's work of Charles Boyle, Avogadro, Gay Lushak, and many other renowned mathematicians. This well-known equation has five variables and determines the changing phases of all compounds from solid to liquid, to gas. With everything in our world landing in a certain location on this chart at room temperature and at one atmospheric pressure. Pretty simple. Will a rock or a liquid or a gas move in its physical state without an increase in temperature or pressure or volume? No. And this is why we cannot comprehend that rhyolite or granite can be softened and molded or cut with a butter knife at room temperature and at one atmosphere of pressure. This unwavering equation with its five variables tells us so, but what if there were a sixth variable placed in a way that would temporarily neutralize the other known variables? Is there a sixth? Yes, let me show you. Thus is derived the valence neutralization theorem. How does this work? Let me give you an analogy. If you have a five-speed transmission, how many places can you move the stick to while you're rolling down the road? Five? Go ahead, let that clutch out. Yes, you can suspend everything and keep on rolling while in your sixth gear, neutral. It's right in the middle. And if you look at the gas law graph, when you disconnect from the other five variables, you can move diagonally into the other phases. The valence neutralization theorem makes it possible for any compound, solid, liquid, or gas, to move between physical states without increasing temperature or volume. Furthermore, the stones that are used in megalithic works around the world are rhyolite, granite, and limestone. These compounds contain the elements of silicon, carbon, calcium, and oxygen. Silicon is the wonder element so highly necessary for the production of electronic components 
and rhyolite, in fact, is 70% quartz, a compound SiO4 of silicon and oxygen, which, as we know, emits its own consistent frequency. Additionally, their individual elements like silica, calcium, and carbon are all even-numbered elements, so they share an even number of valences within their compounds, stable and yet harmonic. Rhyolite and granite, based on their molecular harmonic compounds, would be the easiest and most consistent rocks to neutralize via sonics. I'll let the smartest minds of Stanford, Yale, and MIT work out the details, but this is definitely where we should be looking. And now for the largest benefit to the valence neutralization theorem. The neutralization of atomic structure of any compound would not only affect how that compound's structure adheres to itself, but also its natural attraction to the largest mass of all. Yes, if a compound's atomic structure was temporarily neutralized, it would also become temporarily weightless. Thus, a one-ton block of rhyolite, when neutralized, would temporarily be transitioned into a large Stay Puff moldable weightless balloon, which could easily be carved and placed into the needed position, and then when the atomic disruption variable is removed from the equation, the compound returns to its natural form and settles in as it's reaffirmed by Earth's gravitational force. If the attachment point is not cleaned off immediately before the stone hardens, it will leave a nub. To summarize, it takes some deep thought to accept that the ideal gas law equation can be modified to temporarily suspend the equation completely, but this is what we must consider. Valence neutralization would allow certain harmonically receptive solids to move from one phase to the other without an increase in temperature or pressure. Complete weightlessness and a complete change of phase, it has to be possible. The examples exist around the world. We cannot ignore them any longer. And currently, money is being spent to research harmonics, nanowaves, and enormous colliders. Will the outcome be a valence neutralizer? If yes, then we will be able to temporarily float huge things and manipulate carbon and silica-based objects as if they were plastic and ultra-lightweight. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please like and share. Credits, as always, to Hidden Inca Tours, Bright Insight, Ancient Architects, and Uncharted X. I love their work. Thank you.